Welcome to episode five of Yikes. Today we have a real life adult, Amanda Ayers. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> and as always, I am here. Um, Amanda, would you like to start your story? Uh, sure, I guess. Do we want to talk? say what we're talking about first? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Yikes. Um, today we are talking about failure to contain one's excitement about whatever you're obsessed with. Which so, I, I have the worst issues with ever. Ask literally anyone who knows me. At all, and they will tell you that they know exactly what I like because I can't ever shut up about it. So uh, I guess my story I, I can start with. Um, I, since I can remember, which is a long time when you're 22 and trying to pretend to be an adult, uh, I've been obsessed with musical theater. I've never performed in a show in my life. That's probably a good thing, but. Um, I've always been a huge fan of going to the theater, uh, seeing productions, and then latching on to <laughs> the soundtrack from them and just, just playing them incessantly, uh, learning every single word, every single part, and singing it constantly, whether it be in my head or out loud to the chagrin of my peers. <laughs> um, so this one time I decided that it was a, a damn crime that a couple of my friends had not seen uh, the movie version of Rent, uh, which is one of my favorite shows ever. And so we found it. It was on, uh, actually it wasn't on Netflix at the time, but I have it on DVD because I'm that extra person. Uh, and we were, we were watching it. And about midway through, they both looked at me and said, dude, like, we get that you like this, but can you maybe not sing along to all of it? <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to, <laughs> we're trying to get the experience and so, uh, yeah, I guess my fail was uh, controlling myself, my excitement, um, in uh, not singing along with every word of everything. It's really, really hard. Yeah, that is relatable. I went through this horrible phase where I, like, I'm also really into musical theater, <laughs> but I wanted, like, all of the musical theater, including, like, the terrible, like, from the 1920s, <laughs> like, show tunes type stuff because it's also musical theater and that was another thing that I could learn and so whoever happened to be listening to music with me was just unfortunate (laughs) because nobody else was into it yep and I my little sister is like 13 and she's just coming out of that age where like everything I do is horribly embarrassing like no matter what it is Mm -hmm. but I like I rubbed off onto her a little bit like she'll be hanging out with her friends and play the Book of Mormon soundtrack. Yes. And I'm like, I did it. I raised you. Respect upon our Hello. name. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually like been in musicals. I was in oh, yeah? the Wizard of Oz and I was a tree. It was <laughs> the worst. Real bad. You want to think about being trees on stage. Yes. <laughs> I was a tree. And then in the fall, I was a leaf. And now I'm a tree again. Okay. In Midas. And I was also Emily Book and Sparrow, which wasn't technically a musical, but, like... It's a stage eh. production. Yeah. And, like, there was so much music involved okay. that it was, like, it was dance numbers, but it was still, <laughs> like, music all the time everywhere. Mm. And we were always rehearsing, like, dance numbers. So, yeah. Yeah. And this one time, I remember, I used to play softball as a kid um, for years. And this one night, our coach said, hey, yeah everyone can bring their favorite CD to practice and we will play like a song or two off of it uh, on a loop. Um, everyone gets a chance, but like when you go up to bat for batting practice, we'll play your favorite songs or whatever. <laughs> and I think at one point I brought the Cats musical <laughs> soundtrack and at, the, at another point I brought Hairspray and the second that the first notes left the speaker, everyone just looked at me like I had grown a second head <laughs> That was spouting Latin gibberish. And at that point, I was like, oh, may- maybe my interests are a little different than a- than other people's. But-, but then again, how much do I really care? Cats was my first musical when I was like a tiny little child. Same, yo. Yeah. I'm like... And I bought, I bought the DVD and I watched it every single day when I got home from school. I have a feeling that that says a lot about why I am as I am now. <laughs> Um, but I loved it. I still, I still love it. Even though so many people give me crap about it. I don't care. I really don't care. Cats is wonderful. I don't know if I would have been into it if I had found it like now, (laughs) 
But because I was such a tiny child yeah. and it was my very first musical and I went to see it and I was like, that's what I want to do, you know? <laughs> okay, but it's based on poetry and it's a dance musical. What more could you want? I know it's weird as all shit. Oh, yeah. But it's so cool, too. <laughs> Memory uh-huh. is a bop. I, yeah. That's not the proper word. But <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay, we're going to do my story. <laughs> so, Maddie, what's your story? Okay, I'm switching stories. Oh, because okay. Now that we've had this discussion, well, I came up with a better one. Okay. Um, when I was like eight years old, I got really into like the screamo, like death metal. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was a tiny eight year old, like rocking out. Oh my god! And I like got really into the goth aesthetic. And I was like, Mom, like, I want to paint my nails black, and I want to like dress like that. And she was like, You're not going to. And so Good I job, was. Mom. <laughs> I was a suppressed rocker in my soul, (laughs) and I was very sad about it, because, like, I had an older brother, and my dad was into that kind of stuff, so, like, it was from other people, but I was very into it, and I would, like, show my music to my friends and be like, isn't this the best thing ever? And they would be like, please stop, like, can we listen to something else? Because I would really rather not. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I had, like, My Chemical Romance was, like, my nice, thing. Nice, nice. See, I was never really that into MCR, but I'll, I'll let it slide. Like, Brianna was talking to me about this, because yeah. I mentioned it to her, and she was like, oh, yeah, everybody was into My Chemical Romance. Like, no, when? Who? <laughs> I don't know. I've never met these people. I thought that I was different. <laughs> And I feel like that's the appeal of, like, yeah. liking a specific band is that yeah. like, nobody else has found it. This is mine. Okay, see, but when I do that, it's with obscure Canadian bands that actually people don't listen to. Because they're Canada, uh, Canadian, and America, and all that. Do you search out Canadian bands? No, but, but okay, well, sometimes I'll just be listening to music, just in general, like, or Spotify or something, and I'll find something that I like, and I'll do some Googling, obsessive Googling, it's a thing, and I'll find out that they're Canadian, and I'm like, oh my god, I love this even more now, um, but other times, I, I don't know. Yeah, but, like, I continued my suppressed rocker phase, like, into adolescence. <laughs> And when I was in eighth grade, I finally found somebody else who was into, like, the same genre of music as me. And we were best friends because we were the only people who were into that. I guess because, like, we were in, like, classes with the advanced students and, like, ever- nobody cared about any of that. I guess that I could have yeah. found some goth kids, like, somewhere else. <laughs> But we were into the same music, and because of that, we, like, lashed on to each other. Because I, she mentioned a band that she liked, and I was like, oh, yeah, I like them. And she was like, I don't believe you. Like, name one of their songs. <laughs> oh, no. And so I had to, like, pass this Did test. Did you live in a high school movie? I, like, yes. Early 2000s high school movie? Is that what this is? Yes. I, I actually stole that actually and made this up my Lindsay whole Lohan? life. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Hillary Duff. Mm-hmm. I think that I would rather be I would rather be Hillary Duff because I feel like she turned out normal. Like I don't know what happened I, to her. She had a kid now. And she's still on TV, so that's cool. Lindsay Lohan's kind of disappeared ish. Oh, she's doing okay. Yeah. She yeah. like I was really into her at one point. Because she was in The Parent Trap, mm-hmm. and I was, like, that oh, was, yeah. it was, like, my favorite movie when I was little. Then Confessions I, of a Teenage mm-hmm. Drama Queen. I wanted... That girl was a, yeah, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a twin so bad. It was my dream. And then I got older and found out that I had a twin, but I ate my twin in the womb. And I was like, I had the chance. I killed it. You killed your chance to be Lindsay Lohan. Exactly. I could have written that movie about you. I could have been like British Lindsay Lohan. (laughs) When my parents got divorced because we were twins, they would have taken one. I would have ended up with my mom, (laughs) gone off to Britain. My life would be so different, but I had to be the stronger twin, you know? It's just, it's tragic, really. Being a badass just sucks sometimes. Right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it does. But the story that I was going to tell originally, since we have time, um, I am obsessed with a video game called Life is Strange, which is, like, the first time that I played it, I didn't realize how gay it was. Like, I was just, like, so out of it, and I don't think that I got as obsessed with it, like, after the first time that I played it. And then I realized that I could download it on my computer because Mm -hmm. I share a profile with my brother. Mm -hmm. And so his games can be my games. Mm -hmm. And so I played through it 
like 67 more times. <laughs> I have memorized the entire dialogue. Oh, like of all, this is like five episodes and each episode <laughs> is several hours long. I can like verbatim just okay. rattle it that's off. Like, that's you. like me and anyone who's <laughs> listening to this that knows me is not going to be surprised at all that this finally came up and they're going to actually be shocked that it didn't come up sooner. But there's this Canadian uh, sci-fi show called Lost Girl. It's a really awesome show about this bisexual succubus that just... Uh, kicks ass and takes names and learns how to live in the world of the supernatural uh, race that she is a part of. Uh, And I didn't find out, I didn't watch much of it until um, sophomore year at at Hendrix. Uh, I started watching it freshman year, but then I just, I had to stop because I got too busy because college is awful. Um, And then I finally was like, okay, it's sophomore year. I want to finish watching this. I want to see it through. That was the best and likely worst decision that I've ever made because <laughs> now uh, now I am firmly obsessed. Uh, <laughs> my uh, former roommate Megan and I uh, used to sit at, at the dinner table in the calf and if this is any indication of how many times I have watched the whole series and how how overly much attention that I have paid to it and, uh, and, and heart and soul and blood, sweat, tears, energy I've put into it. Uh, she would she would give me uh, either an episode title or a, a scenario or even just a scene, and I would I am still able to tell you which episode it is, what season, what episode number in the season, what's happening around it, and. <laughs> I, I can quote you lines from the entire show. Like, my, <laughs> my motto now, uh, get ready, everyone out there, you knew it was coming. Uh, my motto in life has been taken from uh, an episode from my favorite character, who's this adorable tiny Russian thief that I aspire to be <laughs> in life. Uh, it's, regret is for suckers, for suckers, for suckers. Regret is for suckers, <laughs> bitch. And uh, so I don't know. Yes, I am very obviously obsessive. I I admit that the first stage is acceptance, right? <laughs> um, but you know, I'm kind of okay with it because that motto and and, and a lot of uh, just the characters and the stuff that they go through in the show it, it's 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 gotten me through a lot. It's gotten me right in my head with myself about a lot of things, and uh, so I guess I, I I am thankful for my uh, extra fandom in that respect. I think that one line. Just- just, like persuaded me into like finding this show it's all on netflix all five seasons and so this is five it's, seasons it's very vengeful how long are the seasons <sighs> okay so <laughs> this is where we get stupid um season two it, it no two's the long one crap four is 16 two is i think 22 two and three are 22 season one was i want to say like 13 ish and then five five is the most recent that i don't quite remember but i'm, go- I'm gonna stop talking about numbers because <laughs> i feel like i'm really going down the geek rabbit hole people don't want to listen to that <laughs> you've given an idea um, it's very good, and you should watch it. Yeah, Life is Strange has, like, the obsession has, like, spread into my relationship with other people, <laughs> which is where it gets, Oh, like... no, no, no. Same <laughs> thing. People call me Kenzie, because that's my favorite character's name. I'm, I am in people's phones <laughs> as Ken's, and my, my, my uh, caller ID photo is a picture of this character. I'm not kidding you at all. There is photographic evidence of this, and it makes me so happy. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, that's my number one rule of, like, if we're going to be friends, we have to play Life is Strange together, like, at least <laughs> once. Like, the first episode nice. minimum. Nice. Brianna and I, like, solidified our friendship <laughs> by playing the entire series together. Mm-hmm. It was a wild time. <laughs> and transitioning. Transitioning. Gracefully. Out of the blue. Into <laughs> our next a section where you are going to ask me a question. I'm going to ask you a question that you I are. definitely didn't only write a few minutes ago because I came prepared. We come prepared here at Yikes. Damn right. Uh, so my question for you, Maddie, is, uh, you know, if you're passionate about something, anything, what is the best way to express it? Our new listeners, by the way, don't listen to this advice. It's terrible advice on purpose. I'm sorry. Can you repeat your question? <laughs> Okay, maybe my question should be, can Maddie listen to me when I ask my questions? No. You know what, Amanda? <laughs> no, no, okay, getting back. <laughs> if you're passionate about something, what is the best way to express it? Okay, here's my terrible advice. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. 
don't. What? <laughs> okay. Pretend that it never happened. Ever. And just like ignore it for the rest of your life. Fake and amnesia. And don't like things anymore. <laughs> Fake amnesia and live in a box. Exactly. Like, under a rock. I don't know how you'd fit a box under a rock, but just live there. Do it. Yeah. Figure it out. Yeah. Get those skills. Yes. <laughs> Okay, Amanda, Sounds like a plan. do you have a last parting piece of terrible advice for our listeners? I, I do. You know, um, if, if, if you're passionate about something, be it music or TV or an activity, dance maybe in our case, uh, d- don't ever talk about it with anyone. You know, uh, if you share your passions, for one thing, you're never going to find anyone who likes likes them as well. Um, everyone's going to hate you and think that you're dumb and you're never going to make any friends ever at all uh, from talking about the things that you like. Uh, you're, you're, you're not going to meet other show tune lovers and then uh, form these lasting friendships that even after you both graduated uh, and go go to different schools in different cities uh, that you still have conversations in show tunes back and forth you're not you're not going to find that uh, if you if you talk about what you're into um, you know it's it's not gonna give you an escape at all from any like fears and anxieties that you have in your head you know um, Canadians are cocaine uh, which which do you prefer that I'm addicted to? Probably the cocaine, right? Um, so, you know, just just bottom line, don't ever talk about things that you're into because it's not going to get you anywhere and you're just going to end up alone regardless. For someone who, like, cannot comprehend sarcasm in real life, I've created a show that's literally just, like, <laughs> nothing but, like, entirely, at least the last five minutes of oh, every yes. show that I have is just blatant, <laughs> straight sarcasm. Oh, but that's my language, Maddie. <laughs> I don't think I speak anything else. I'm just so bad at figuring out (laughs) when people are kidding. Like, if you tell me something, I that's what I'm going to believe. I think that I just meant any of that, because then I sound well, like a massive... But we literally just said <laughs> terrible <laughs> advice. I know, so that, I know. It's different in that It's case. always a afraid thing. Okay, y'all. Are you ready for my terrible advice? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you have friends that you show what you're interested into, and they were like, that's terrible and boring, like, never mention this again, this is lame, those are quality friends, like... The best. Stick to them. The best. You don't need any other ones. And Those are your people. And if they think that they're lame, that you're lame for being into it, they're totally right. Exactly. Totally. Only keep the friends that you have. Never branch out. Don't ever. Don't do it. It's not worth it. New friends are for geeks. Hey. <laughs> Sarcasm. Blatant sarcasm, remember? (laughs) This is yikes, gosh darn it. Okay, that was episode five. Tune in next week for episode six, which I don't have right now. It's going to be an adventure. We're going to figure it out. It's fine. We don't play on things here. This is yikes. Except for when I'm around. Bye. Bye.